Well, hello, this is Kelly and I am the Mathematic Plumber and welcome to video four of the wet venting series. In today's video, we're going to talk about sizing advanced wet vented systems. All code references will be made from the 2050 National Plumbing Code of Canada. This video assumes you already have prior knowledge of plumbing code interpretation and sizing of drains and vents. And for those of you new to this topic, no problem, I have two video series, Basic Drainage Waste and Venting and Level 2 Drainage Waste and Venting. Up till this point, we've only sized up really basic wet venting systems, so what we're going to do is add in some more trap arms, fixture drains, and even branches into the wet vent, and we're going to see what that does to the sizing of the wet vent. Let's start with code clause 25211E. Trap arms and fixture drains connected to the wet vent do not exceed 2 inches in size, except for connections from emergency floor drains in accordance with sentence 25113. To best explain this, let's use this relatively busy wet vented system. In this system, the wet vent starts here at this lav trap arm. It's going to travel down, around the corner, and then follow this pipe horizontally until it meets up with the water closet trap arm, which is right here. So let's clarify what these fixtures are. I have a flush tank water closet here. I have a three compartment kitchen sink with one and a half inch fixture outlets, meaning I have a two inch trap right here. I have a lav sink right here. I have a shower with two shower heads. And over here, I have a dual vented system with two lavs. So this code clause talks about two different things, trap arms and fixture drains. So let's look down here at this shower with two heads. I have a two inch trap arm going into the wet vent. That's good according to this clause, that's the maximum. And then I have this fixture drain here, serving the three compartment kitchen sink. This is also two inches. I am not allowed to be bigger than that. Our code clause does give us an exception for emergency floor drains though. I can drain an emergency floor drain into my wet vent and it doesn't matter what size that emergency floor drain is. It could be three inches or four inches. All right, let's go into the next code clause, 25211F. The total hydraulic load on the wet vent does not exceed the limit stated in table 2581 when separately vented branches or fixture drains in the same story, having a total hydraulic load not greater than two fixture units, are connected to the wet vent or a wet vented water closet trap arm. Now this code clause is a mouthful and it is a huge run on sentence with multiple different pieces. So let's break it down piece by piece so we can understand this. Now the first piece is talking about table 2581 that we used in the last video for sizing wet vents. This just says we're not allowed to exceed these values. The next part of this is a little tricky to understand because it's written so cryptically. But if you have a branch or fixture drain draining into your wet vent, the maximum hydraulic load for each of those is two fixture units. So back to this picture. I've got the three compartment kitchen sink with a two inch trap and it's draining two fixture units through it. And that's going into a fixture drain. That's the maximum amount of fixture units I'm allowed to drain through a fixture drain. Over on the other side, I've got a dual vented set of labs. Labs are one fixture unit each, and it drains down into this branch. So we have two fixture units draining through this branch, connecting into the wet vent. That is the maximum amount of fixture units I am allowed to drain through a branch into a wet vent. Now the last little piece of this code is actually a very strange one that we don't do so much in the field. It says that we can actually connect these fixture drains or branches into the wet vented water closet trap arm. Here is a picture right from the code book showing how we do that here. Now, if we do decide to do this, the maximum amount of fixture units we're allowed to drain through that is still two for either a branch or a fixture drain. And now we need to size up the wet vent. Sizing up the wet vent is no different than doing it for a basic wet venting system. First thing we need to do is count up all the fixture units that are draining into the wet vent. So we need to consult table 2493 to find out how many fixture units each one of these things are. So over here, I have this lav draining into the wet vent. And then I have two labs draining through a branch that goes into the wet vent. Each one of those labs is one fixture unit, so I'm at three fixture units. I have a shower with two heads. That's three fixture units. So three plus three is six. I have a three compartment kitchen sink with a two inch trap that has two fixture units. So we are now at eight fixture units. Now it's important to note that we never count the last connected fixture when we are sizing up our wet vent. It's not actually draining into the wet vent, so we don't have to count its fixture unit load to size the wet vent. 
So I take my fixture unit load of 8 and I go and look at table 2581 to size my wet vent. Now I need to look in the right hand column because I am serving a water closet. And I come down to 2 inches and that says I'm only good to 3 fixture units. If I go down to a 3 inch wet vent, I can do 8 fixture units. That will be the size of my wet vent. Now our wet vent never changes in size. That means we're going to be 3 inch right from the lav trap arm here all the way down to our water closet trap arm down here. Now let's go back to this odd picture in the code book where we have this lav fixture drain joining into the water closet trap arm. All right, let's size up the system. I've got two lavs draining into the wet vent. They are one fixture unit apiece. That is two fixture units. I have two showers, both with two heads. They are three fixture units each. At this point, I have eight fixture units in total draining into the wet vent. Now, according to this code clause, I need to account for that one fixture unit draining through the fixture drain that's draining into the water closet trap arm, and I need to count that into my wet vent as well. So that brings my total fixture unit load up to nine fixture units. And I need to go and look at table 2581. And 3 inch was only good up to 8 fixture units because I am serving a water closet still. So now I actually have to go to a 4 inch wet vent. Now one thing I did not talk about in the last video is the section of piping downstream of the water closet trap arm that's wet vented. That is called a branch. And a branch and how to size it is covered in a totally different video in one of my different series. So you can go find that and watch that. Now the one thing we have not talked about with the wet vented system here is how do we size the continuous vent? And guess what? That is for the next video, so stay tuned for that. And until that point, you have yourself a stupendous day.